Several organic products use peppermint essential oil as an active ingredient in their insect repellent organic sprays. And today we're going to see how we can do that ourselves. You probably can't see them. I have several plants in here and I have been struggling with fly larvae. I use the apple cider vinegar method where I just put it in a bowl with some soap and the soap breaks the surface tension and allows the fruit flies to fall into the apple cider vinegar and drown. But unfortunately, that only kills the adults. It does not kill the larva that's present in the soil. So I constantly have this problem with the fly larva sprouting up from the soil and going in here and spreading from just pot to pot. So it's time to put an end to it. I did some research to figure out the truth behind the peppermint essential oil, whether it actually is effective at killing insects or not. Specifically, I wanted to see if it was effective at killing fly larva. Unfortunately, I did not find the information that I needed, but I did find out that it is effective against repelling insects as flies and mosquitoes. And also it is very effective in killing certain insects. In one of the researches that I have read, they did a study on peppermint oil and its effects on the potato beetle or the cucumber beetle and black bean aphid. And in both cases, it was effective at killing the black bean aphid and the potato beetle at the very young stage, at the larva stage, at concentrations below 0.5%. So it was effective at the very young stages of the larva. But once the larva reached the eighth day period, that concentration was not effective. They needed to up the concentration to 1%. Unfortunately, peppermint essential oil, according to the research, was also found to be effective at killing Japanese ladybugs. And because Japanese ladybugs are beneficial insects, we don't want to kill them. So in the research, they suggested if you are going to use the peppermint essential oil as an insecticide, you'll want to dilute it at concentrations 0.5, below 0.5%, because it was the concentrations that were higher than 0.5% that killed the larva of the Japanese beetle. And I would assume since it killed the larva, it might also do some damage to the adult insect itself. We might not see the damage. I'm just speculating right now, but it might. That is one of the official insects that it can be harmful to. So if you are going to use the peppermint essential oil as an insect repellent outdoors, just be mindful of that and use it at concentrations below 0.5%. But since we are using it indoors, I'm going to up that percentage. I'm actually not going to measure because I don't have the proper scales with me right now. I would need a very accurate scale in order to do that. So this is 60 milliliters. I'm not going to be using 60 milliliters at one shot to try to kill these larvae. Now I haven't seen really that much activity in here. I actually haven't seen any, so they might have died. But just in case, I want to use this method as a preventative in order to make sure that these insects are eliminated. Because today I just started some lavender seeds right here and I don't want the larvae to get into my seedlings and kill them at the roots. I would much rather attack it right now before I see any activity while things look dormant rather than wait and then see a much bigger problem after this. Because I'm also planning on using outside once the next season comes, I wanted to make sure that it's going to be safe for other pollinators like the bees. So I did some more research. In that research, I found that peppermint essential oil is actually beneficial to bees. Some scientists included the peppermint essential oil along with some pathogens, like a mold pathogen that the bees are susceptible to and the foul brood larva that the bees are also susceptible to. They heat killed those pathogens and they included them along with the peppermint essential oil and they fed them to the bees along with their feet. What they found out is that the peppermint essential oil has increased the health of the nurse bees and they wanted to pass the genetics of the resistance to foul brood and that specific fungus disease. Uh, to the bees. Now, not the fungus disease itself, but the resistance to the disease. And they found that the peppermint essential oil has helped tremendously. It made the genetics of the nurse bees a lot stronger. The defensive genetics against pathogens and diseases and the genetic that forms their 
nuclear structure which can be passed on to the next generation. And also nurse bees take care of the larva. I did not see specifically if they were able to tell the study whether it was passed by the nurse bees to the larva or whether it was passed through genetics. I'm not sure. I mean, they, they call it a social vaccine. I'm not exactly sure. I might be saying it wrong. I forgot the exact term. They were hoping that it, they would give it to them as a vaccine and they found it to be very helpful, specifically the peppermint essential oil in increasing the bees' health at defending themselves against the pathogens and diseases. After finding this out, of course, I have a relief because we do have bees, and even though there are a lot of beekeepers in our area, we still do not see that many bees around. And because we live in a cold area and because we have a lot of diseases that our bees face. So if I use peppermint essential oil outdoors as an insect repellent, then that's actually going to be beneficial for the bees. It's not going to harm them. But I want to make sure to use it at a percentage that is lower than, than 0.5 because I don't want to harm other beneficial insect, insects like the ladybug because the ladybugs eat aphids and we want to get rid of the aphids. But today our problem isn't aphids. Today our problem is the fly larva. So what I'm going to do, I have this watering can over here filled with water and I'm going to pour some of this peppermint essential oil into this watering can. I'm going to put several drops in there. I'm not going to measure, but I'm going to pour quite a bit in there. My concern, and I haven't seen any research on that, is its effects on the roots of the plants. The research that was done, that I have read, was done on the surface of the plants, on the leaf, on the foliage, not on the roots of the plants. Now, when you do spray the plants, they, some of that liquid is going to go down into the soil. Also, it might be absorbed by the foliage of the plants, so maybe it's not harmful. But I just want to be careful, so I'm not going to put too much in here but I am going to put enough amount that I think is going to be enough in order to kill the fly larva. This is also an organic peppermint oil so it doesn't have any pesticides on it. And I'm looking and I'm looking at the level over here to see how much I have poured into the watering can. So I put about this much into the watering can. I'm hoping that will be enough. I think that's a pretty high concentration. We'll see if it's gonna work or not. According to the research I've read, again, this works for other insects. So I'm hoping it will work for the larva, that for the fly larva in here. Because it is a fly larva, it's at a very young stage. So I'm hoping it would have the same effect. Because peppermint essential oil is an oil, unfortunately, it does not mix with the water. I am going to try to agitate it every time I water one plant, just to make sure that these plants are all going to be receiving the peppermint essential oil and not just one of them with a high dosage and possibly kill that plant. You could pour in here an emulsifier, but I'm not sure what kind of emulsifier would work that is not going to be harmful for the plants. I did not do any research on that. And I didn't think to do research on that until I was pouring it into the watering can and I was thinking, how am I going to make this mix with the water? Because oil does not mix with water. So we're just going to try to agitate it as we water the plants. Also peppermint essential oil can be skin irritant, so you want to be careful when you are handling it. It can be applied to the skin at the same time, but when you do, you have to put it with, it, with an oil. At a, at, the oil has to be at high concentration and the peppermint essential oil has to be at low concentration so that it does not harm your skin because it is very potent. So just be careful when you are handling it that it does not come on your skin and possibly cause irritation. So I'm just using a plant tag to see if I can mix this oil in here or not. We're gonna see if this is going to work out. But I can tell you one thing, this thing smells amazing. I love it makes me want peppermint tea.
I ended up with tons of peppermint essential oil still in the can. I think most of them got some of that peppermint essential oil. While I was watering, I did see one fly. So hopefully this method is going to work. So now every time I'm going to water these plants, hopefully some of that peppermint essential oil is going to still be present in there. And it's going to be mixed in with that water in order to water these the plants that I have in here. And together we're going to see if this is actually going to work or not. According to the research that I've done, it is supposed to work on the insects that they have done the research on. But I'm thinking because it is used in other organic insect repellents, then it might be more than just those two insects that they mentioned, which are the potato beetles and the black bean aphid. And those are things that I do deal with. And so because of that, I'm also going to be using it outside at the recommended dosage. And when I do, then I will actually do the proper measurement because I don't want to harm the ladybugs. Over here, I don't have to do proper measurements because I don't have any ladybugs in here and there are no pollinators or anything of the sort. I will be leaving links for you guys down in the description box below for the websites that I have found the research on if you're interested in diving deeper into this subject and if you want to make sure for yourself <laughs> that this is true information. The links to these websites are going to be down in the description box below. This DIY grow light system is soon going to be filled with a whole bunch of plants and I'm hopeful that this DIY insect repellent is going to work. If you want to see how you can set up your own DIY grow light system, you can watch this video right here.